for a day. I spun up a, a VM just in, uh, in the United States <coughs> and did a test. And, and things were faster, and things are actually faster than the other chart. And it's hard to draw conclusions. But I do notice that I'm seeing the 9 megabits again with my American service. Whatever else is going on in any window. I don't trust speed test. I don't either. But I was also because curious. I don't trust my ISP. You're right. Because so I was curious if you ran the same test in one of the speed test servers, if you got a faster result, because you have almost proved that your ISP is a lot of faster traffic. The answer is I'm not getting better performance, but I don't touch those sites because it doesn't answer a question for me, which is, is my ISP doing something for me? Do you have a good way to independently verify that without going to speed test? Sure. I can do a speed test to my cloud server and another one's a speed test. That's what I would do if I was interested in that. I just, it's not a question that I'm interested in answering. So the next thing I know is this thing is intermittent. How intermittent is it? I did a quick and dirty test where I did my download test and I just ran it once an hour and I kept appending the data to the same CSV file. And I ran that sucker for, for four or five days and the result was a very, very large spreadsheet. And when I plotted it, it took all of that data. Each one of those spikes is actually a full download, but it's been compressed so much that all you're seeing is this is, is that peak download performance from that entire time. And again, not really strong evidence, but you can see that I have a problem. That turns out it's prime time-ish on Thursday night. I had a problem. And then through the weekend, it didn't show up again. I need to look harder at this, but I've kind of hit the limit of what I can do with tests like this. If you look at the resources available from um, from Cacti and MRTG, they have kind of a, a ping monitor as a way to look at this sort of thing. I didn't find that very satisfying. You can see a plot of a weak data uh, model there. And you can see some stuff going on, but I cannot tell you how the ping time correlates to my download problem. I really just don't know. It's really just not that interesting. So I ended up writing another probe. This one's for MRTG. It's again available on GitHub. That goes, and as MRTG queries this script, it will do a download once an hour from the thing I'm pointing to, which is my cloud server, and it'll give me a data point of how well that download did for a pretty small download. So there's there's some overhead. The performance is really a little better than that, but it's not that important to me. It'll also plot on a separate line what the worst performance is for the last 24 hours, the last 24 downloads, and that's what that plot was. And it wasn't really telling me too much except that I'm getting about three megabits worst case during the day and about six megabits the rest of the time. But earlier this week. Wednesday of this week, the problem cropped up again, didn't I? I hadn't noticed when it happened, but it showed up later. I actually updated the slides so you can see that. I find that to be useful. I'll probably do, be doing that to a lot more sites, so I'll have parallel tests and I'll be able to see if my problem here turns out to be a problem there, or my problem here on Wi-Fi turns out to be a problem on a hardware connection. Other tests that were on my list of things to do that I ended up not doing because I didn't mean to. First is, if, I'm have traffic, if I have traffic shaping affecting me, is it correlated? Uh, is SSH being punished relative to HTTP? Is it a real possibility? Is, uh, is BitTorrent being punished relative to everything else? And so I can do that test if I need to by um, the simple way to do that is take my SSH daemon on auto and have to listen to other ports. Um, I didn't do that in this case because I found that that one test, that American VM, was getting 20 plus megabits and so uh, over SSH. And so I don't think in the general case that I have a problem there. I didn't do that test. Um, is it just DigitalOcean, the OS auto, that's causing this problem? If I was going to my support to, to tell them to fix this, I would make sure I have this test across multiple VPSs and across multiple countries before I did that. I'm not to the point of needing that yet. And one thing I do need to do is test Wi-Fi versus hard connection. I'm thinking what I need to do is have both a Wi-Fi connection and a physical connection on my workstation so that I can test automatically and I can switch between them just by changing the default record. I expect I will be doing that in the near future. Interesting question came up. What about VPNs in this scenario? So let's say that my, I'm right and my TCP sessions really are being limited. My individual sessions are being limited relative to my overall performance. That's bad news for a VPN, because the potential is there for my v for if I have a VPN, then everything I'm getting is being treated like a single TCP stream. I may be getting very, very bad performance. It also suggests an opportunity. OpenVPN has a mechanism where you can where you can make a tunnel 
and it looks like a local network device using the TUN interface. Uh, what happens if you set up half a dozen of those to your cloud service, and then you set up a network bond locally? It's very easy in Linux to set up a network bond that connects those all together as a single interface. You set a round robin policy so that every packet is spread out over all those VPNs. I'm very interested to know whether that makes a difference in this world. I'd be very interested to do it myself. If you guys do it, I'd be very interested in the results. Okay, so I'm, I'm all my time here. I'm doing okay. Uh, this is what I've learned to this point. I'm still not very far in the process. There's more to do. But what do I know now? Well, I know that, number one, I'm paying for 30 megabits, and at least some of the time, I'm getting 30 megabits. It is possible for my network, including my Wi-Fi, in order to get that kind of service. I don't have to, I don't have to attack my Wi-Fi as the problem for me not getting 30 megabits. I know that at least one case, my domestic virtual private server was able to get performance that matched that Netflix I showed up front. So it's not quite time to be pulling out the network neutrality pitchforks. Uh, I was ready, but I found it a data case <laughs> where it didn't happen. I am seeing and documenting cases where my bandwidth really, really, really bad. Um, it's not chronic, it's not happening all the time, and I'm getting a handle on what it is. I need to know better what that is, and I'm in a process to do that. There is a recurring 9 megabit per stream bandwidth limitation that needs to be looked at more often. doesn't happen all the time, but if it's there, you need to know more about it. And I'm getting regular extended dropouts and data transfers. But again, uh, maybe this is one thing that may be related to my local Wi-Fi. I need to eliminate that as a cause. Uh, all in all, I'm actually feeling better about my network service than I was going in. Um, it's, it's not perfect, but, and it's not, what I, it's not everything that I would expect when I'm paying for the service, but it's not really, really terrible. It's better than what I had five years ago. And finally, certain invention techniques work. Um, I actually use split copy now to download files <laughs> because it's faster than not using it. And, and I'm really looking forward to knowing uh, what a VPN might be able to do, a multi-stream what VPN does in this case. There's another set of questions that I really don't know any better the answer to than when I started. And I'm really not on a path to being able to get those answers at this point. Um, I have 30 megabit service, but based on my results at this point, it suggests that I could go to 20 megabits and get exactly the same experience since something is limited to 10 anyway. <laughs> um, is that a true statement or not? I don't know. I won't know unless I try the 20 megabit service. <clears throat> um, is my experience the same as everybody else on the ISP? I have no idea. I cannot tell you in any way, shape, or form what anybody else's experience with this ISP is. And I also can't tell you that if I go to the other service that's available to me, whether or my life is going to be any better or worse. I can tell you how much it's going to cost, but I can't tell you whether my network is going to be any better. Uh, I can't answer those questions. I'm not on the path to answering those questions. The only way that we can get an answer to those two questions is to crowdsource. You need lots of people asking the same questions at the same time and getting those answers together. So that's the ulterior motive for this talk. And that's where you come in. As the assembled brain trust of the Central Ohio Linux Digerati, I need you guys to go and go through the same process and find out what your network is, find out what your limitations are, come to some conclusions, and publish them. So that's what I ask you to do. Set up your monitoring, do your tests, use the tests that are out there, use my tests, make your own tests. And by all means, publish your results. I, if anybody does this, I'd be very interested in knowing what your results are. And especially, if any of you live in Cincinnati, contact me. <laughs> <laughs> so that I can get an answer, at least in my location, for what's going on. Uh, my email's down at the bottom. Please feel free to contact me if you want to talk about this. And I think we have a little bit of time for questions. Just a couple minutes. If anybody has any. Yes, sir. Once I get to the point of having a set of like, places which are a problem, that would be a natural way in order to be able to isolate what's going to come in between them. I'm not to the point now where I have a set of locations. That's, that's an ongoing process. But yes, that's a very good tool. Yes, well, maybe consider like, setting up access to your auto service so you all have the same script as downloaded so you can all have a problem with the compiler results. Maybe you have a script that automatically uploads the question. Sounds like a 
Sounds like a new project to work on. Give me a call. joy there is having a continuous monitoring all that. And I showed you the plot there, and, and, uh, and yes, I've seen the results from there. It's really not useful in, in, in a general sense until you're pointing it at your local, overall router. At that point, you can see overall what your data service is, and I think that's very useful. I have seen some problems with my local network, and I've fixed some things based on just the plots from my local workstation. Anything else? Yes, sir. Did you look at perf sonar at all? You do. Say it again, sonar? Are Perf sonar? Perf sonar? No, P E R F sonar. Perf sonar. It's a Linux no. distribution produced by Internet 2 that okay. is designed to do the sort of things you're doing. <laughs> so it has everything packaged and it, it makes be, charts. It would be great to have somebody do a better job of packaging than I did. <laughs> and, uh, I would recommend anybody look at it. Split copy was useful. I think you should, you should give that one a try if you, if you come across any uh, limitations. Yes, sir. So while we're at it, so, um, so I work with scientists and big data sets. So your observation of parallel transfer being faster is, is well known in places. And there's actually a protocol called grid FTP, which is like FTP, but it streams it across multiple TCP connections. Or right? BitTorrent. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, might be a couple other things limiting your bandwidth, particularly to your server, is maybe encountering CPU limitations by your DigitalOcean because... No, I don't eliminate that. Because you're doing calculations when you do your SCPs. If that's the case, like if that's the case, then parallel transfers is not going to help. It's a single core server. I, I, did, I did look at that. It's not, yeah. it's not the case. Yes, sir. I used to work for Ensign and uh, Warner. The biggest issue you're running into with single threads is stochastic computing. <clears throat> yes. There's, there's no question. In other words, that's another word for traffic shaping. No, no, actually it's not. Uh, stochastic for queuing is more when, when you're doing, you know, t 10 customers have 10 megabit and you have a 10 megabit backhaul. Mm -hmm. If only one of those customers is using it at one point in time, they can get more bandwidth. Mm -hmm. But when everybody else asks for bandwidth too, the underlying DOCSIS protocol will actually say, you know, talk to the router upstream to get how many bandwidth slots I can get. Mm -hmm. And stochastic for queuing is configured other than FIFO. FIFO is the default on most routers. Everybody with FIFO would be able to use the whole bandwidth. Yes. But most but that, in in the broad bandwidth. sense, what you're describing is congestion. Yes. Um, and, and I'm suggesting that my problem not congestion because I got such a square top on that transfer when I get it. If it was congestion, I would expect, I would expect more variation. On that. I wouldn't expect a magic 9 megabit number. I'd expect a number which is less than 30 and changes over time. How many threads did you have for the same connection? I did up to eight, and, and what I displayed, I did up to eight, and it was about four times. I mean, it is possible that that's the cause, um, well, but it's not the most likely. Would maybe not peak it at nine. That, that makes that part maybe QoS configured for max concurrent streams per protocol, where we can QoS be a lot. Yep. Yep. In general, what you're saying it, it may be in general, it may be in the broad sense congestion rather than, than shaping. I think that's it's semantics. Yes. Anything else? Thank you very much. Cool. You take a second.